Today I'm making a shoe storage. The best part about it, you don't need a ton of tools. And you may not need a shoe storage, but seeing the process could give you the confidence to tackle your own. This video is brought to you by 3M. To open up a whole new world of possibilities, 3M asked if I could assemble one of their scooters using just VHB tape. I'll explain later in the video. For projects that are not too complicated, you can take your measurements with you and have the lumber store cut it down. And of course, if you're super hands-on and you prefer to cut it yourself, you can always do so. So before we begin, I have all the parts cut and dimensioned down in the video description. So these are going to be key components to building this. The dowels, the jig, the bit, wood glue, and a few hand tools. Now dowels could be tough to deal with, but I believe if you just have a little patience, you can get through this. You can use any hardware you like, I just think it's important for me to show different ways to build things. I'm going to start off by creating one of the smaller boxes first. Now I'm going to set it up exactly how I want it to be once it's all assembled. That means lining everything up. Then draw a line across both pieces. I only put two dowels per side but you can absolutely put more. I'll repeat the same step for all four corners on each side. Now I'll need to break this back down so it's important for me to go ahead and label both pieces so I know which side go where. Labeling can be as simple as writing a number or a letter as I'm doing here. Now I'll need to make the adjustment with setting up my bit and the dowel jig. Now you'll want to make sure you're not going all the way through. It is important to go ahead and test this on a piece of scrap wood just to make sure that you're good. On the dowel jig there are a couple lines on it and the lines are an indication to let you know where's the center point of the bit. So you'll want to place this line on the line that was marked and then clamp that down. At this point, I'm ready to start drilling. The first holes were drilled in the side of the plywood. And to make the two parts come together, I need to now drill a hole in the grain of the plywood. And this is pretty much the gist of it. I'm gonna build two boxes that's the size of this one and all the measurements will be down in the video description. And I'll build three boxes that are the smaller ones. Now I thought it was easier to go ahead and drill all the holes per boxes then go ahead and set the boxes up by placing all the dowels in the hole and then set it up first. I wanted to make sure that everything came out right before we got to the gluing. And because everything was labeled, I didn't have to guess which piece go where. This is gonna be a long process and I'll be repeating the same step over and over again until I get all the boxes built. While I'm doing that, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by 3M and today we're gonna to be putting their VHB tape to the test. Now this tape is designed to have a strong bond and as a way to prove that, 3M sent me a scooter to assemble using only the VHB tape. Now this tape can join a variety of materials such as aluminum, steel, glass, plastic, and painted surfaces. This is a double-sided acrylic foam tape that lets you quickly and easily create a long-lasting bond that actually builds strength over time. And on top of that, you're maintaining a clean aesthetic by eliminating visible fasteners like screws and bolts. I couldn't wait to test this scooter because I absolutely want to see how well it will hold up. Now it is a pretty strong tape and I didn't do any stunts or anything because that's not my thing. All I cared about was just going forward. Overall the tape did its job and if you'd like to learn more about the VHP tape and its abilities, check out the link down in the video description. Now at this point everything passed the visual test, let's glue it all up and permanently put it together. So first I'm gonna run a bead of glue across the grains, spread it out with a silicone brush, then be sure to place glue on the dowels and in the holes. Now with all the sides glued up, it's time to clamp this thing down. So four clamps is pretty much all you need per box, two on each side, and you can use band clamps if you have access to some of those. I do recommend clamping because you wanna make sure that the box keep its form and stay squared to the glue dry. The two large box will have a back on them, so I'm gonna run a bead of glue around those. So for one of these, I'm going to clamp one, and then the other one, I'm going to use tape and just wait to hold it on, and you should end up with the same results. Now once I got past all of that, here's where I'm at now. I have three smaller boxes, and I ended up with two larger boxes. And now it's time to tackle the base. There's a total of eight pieces, the front, the back, the side, and last but not least, the middle supporter. And to assemble that, I'm gonna also use dowels. And this could come off as doing it as the hard way, but again, we're gonna use these limited pieces to make this entire build. You can use pocket hole screws here or any kind of joinery.
As with everything else, we're going to apply glue on the face. And now I can place all the dowel pins in the holes. Now once I have the entire face glued and also the dowel pins, I can begin to put the sides on and then the face. To this date, I never built anything of this size by just dowels. Now if you were going to tackle something like this, you could make the entire back go all the way across. The only reason I'm building it this way is because I ran out of plywood and I didn't want to cut a new sheet. So I just worked with the pieces I had to build a base. Now although I'm speeding things up in this video, I did make sure that I prepped my whole area and had everything within arm's reach so I could put this together fairly fast. Now I gave enough time for the glue to dry and once that was done, I was able to come back and then sand the entire thing down with 120 grit sandpaper, then follow that up with 220 grit sandpaper as the final prep. Some areas needed extra attention and I used wood filler to fill in those end grains so I can paint this section. As a one step finish, I'm going to use some walnut danish oil. I gave this a quick test on the test piece and that came out good and I like the color but I didn't shake the can before I did that. Now, before I started applying the color on the original piece, I shook the can and that actually mixed up everything and gave me a darker finish than I was hoping for. Danish oil seeps into the wood, so it's a little different from stain. So that makes it really hard to remove from the wood. Once I have my desired setup, I can go ahead and finish applying the Danish oil. And I'll do one piece at a time just to make sure that I like the direction I'm going. Now I'm going to take the two bottom panel and glue those together. Doing so would just make it easier to paint and I could also hide the seam. Now I can tell you that you don't necessarily need to glue these or join them together. One thing you could do is leave them loose and then arrange these whenever you get bored with a certain setup. And while all the other pieces are finished with Danish oil, this is going to be the only piece they get painted. I applied one coat of primer and then two coats of white paint. Everything's gonna be held together with glue. And I'll begin with one of the larger boxes. And this one is gonna overhang by approximately two inches. With the cabinet in place, I can throw on a clamp, attach the other side, glue that into place, and then put clamps on the entire piece. Once the wood glue set, it's insanely strong and it will take an enormous amount of force to pull this apart. And this ain't proving much, I'm just getting a quick workout. Now let's get back to work. My goal is to apply glue wherever the boxes are gonna connect with each other. And pretty much I'm gonna repeat the same thing I've been doing is just glue, clamps, glue, clamps. And I'll see you guys at the reveal. And here you have it, a nice two-tone shoe storage to fit the space. I also made a simple shoe stand just off to the left, which can be used in the larger boxes to store even more shoes. This also makes it versatile where you can store your shoes and your much taller boots. And there's plenty of room to spare whether you want to arrange your shoe configuration or just store your belongings on the top. Well, that is it for this one. Be sure to check the video description for more detail on this build. If you ain't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you on the next one.